Hi everyone, Michael here. Happy New Year. I'm here to present to you some new features that LaserPecker has just released. This was sent to us via an email, or you might have seen some of this as a post from some other users. The features that I'm going to present are material testing and single element engraving. Embossing effect has been there previously, um, so I'm not going to cover that. Now material testing is available on the desktop software and this is covered in a separate video and single elements engraving is available on Android but now on iOS. Uh, material testing isn't available on Android on a nice feature button but you can do it manually and I've covered that also in a post in the user groups. So let's get to this and I will demo this on my iPad. This applies for iOS and iPad OS. So most important is to get into our application. And if we go to the create screen, you will see that nothing is different compared to previous. And this is because we haven't enabled the feature. What we need to do is to first connect to our laser so tap at the top to connect to your LP identify your laser tap on it and then once connected go to the top right tap on the cog and then scroll all the way down to experimental go into experimental and enable the top two items so single element carving parameters and single element transfer carve. The first one enables you to set various settings for each object you set at a high level layer and the single element transfer carving sends each object separately to the laser. Tap on back and back and now when we tap on create you will see that at the bottom on the menu bar we have material testing. So this is a new item which has come in, but also what will be different is if we go into layers on the carving layer, once we have items here, you'll see uh, for each item we've placed, there will be some settings that we can change. But first, let's come back and enter material testing, tap on that, and a new window will pop up. Here, LaserPecker have set up for us a 5x5 five five grid with a maximum power of 100, maximum depth of 100, a minimum of 10 on each for the power and the depth, and you can see the rows which are there. They've also enabled that you can do this test on fill, which is black and white, or an image, which tends to be for dithering, or a line. So I tapped on image there, and you can see we can add a picture if we want. So let's just add in a picture. So let's put in a dog and you'll see uh, the dog appears in the grid above. If we do a line, you'll see the outline of square or what you can do is do this for cut as well. So to see how well each one of these settings cuts through your parameters, through your material. Let's say if we go back to fill, one of the core things here is to obviously choose your laser source, so the 450, which is the blue laser, or 1064, which is the infrared invisible laser. And then likewise, you can uh, set your resolution um, for, for your test. Now, one of the important things about this is that you do not leave your laser when running the test. If I draw a line, if I just imagine a line from 100 to 100, um, anything below and to the right of that line will most likely char and cause a few flames. So very important to remain with your laser. If possible, have a little squirty bottle or ensure that you're going to blow on the flame to put it out or have a fire extinguisher if things get out of hand. Um, so reiterate again do not leave your laser when running these tests especially on flammable material 
Traditionally, you'll see this as a 10 by 10. So let's create a 10 by 10 matrix. There we go. And we will bring this now into our work area by tapping on the tick. There we go. As you can see, it's quite large for the work area of the laser pecker 4. So normally I reduce this down to be at um, 70 or 80 millimeters. Let's do 80 millimeters here and center it. And as you can see, the grid is nicely centered and you can send this straight away to engrave if you like. However, what I'm going to cover now, if you have a look at this and I tap on layers, you'll see all of them have been grouped together. You'll also see right at the bottom on the menu bar, it says unpack, you can unpack that. But if we tap on the carving layer now, you'll see under picture, so that was the black and white, um, you've got all these items. Now all these items are essentially a different object and the way this is treated is a bit like a different layer. So as you can see, some of these rectangles, so this one at the top has um, a power of 10% and depth of 20. Um, and then likewise, uh, going on, you can see that the power and depth changes as we go through these. Can I change these? I can, if I tap on one of them, I've got the option to change all these items. Um, so you can go ahead and do that if you want. It goes to show that, yes, you can do this manually if you want as well. What I'm going to do now is drop back into the main screen. And if you remember, I mentioned if you draw an imaginary line of um, from 100 to 100, anything below and to the right will cause a lot of scorching and uh, little flames. Well, what we can do is, in fact, remove quite a lot of these items. So what I'll do is tap on the um, grid again and tap on unpack. If I tap on unpack and tap off, now what I can do is select quite a few of these items and delete. Now I've done a lot of these grids on other lasers, so I more or less know what I want to delete. Now on Android and uh, desktop, or what I should say, Android Alpha and the actual desktop software, we have a option called Threshold. I'm hoping that this will come into iOS, but this is the form of grid I would normally engrave. Um, and as you can see, most of these uh, boxes are above an imagined diagonal line from 100 to 100. So if I engrave this now, I will know that I pretty much will get um, some good results for the color that I need for engraving. You can ensure that others are still left in. Uh, that's totally up to you. Now, one of the other things that I was going to do is tap on one of these boxes. So this is going to be at 10% depth and 100% power. If I go to layers and click on the carving layer, you will see the box here where I've got 110. Now I tap on another one, you can see 40 and 20. Let's go the other way and 100 depth and 10 power. So showing you very much that you have full control over each one of these boxes and let's say I select more than one and come back to layers and carving layer you'll see I've got four items there all with different settings so this is setting up for iOS that you can um, do anything you want more or less um, but for power test grid uh, now that you've got yourself set up you could have run the previous test grid or as this altered one is so you highlight everything tap on preview transfer the items and engrave 
If we go to the single element item, which I showed you again, I can bring in any um, object. So let's bring in a center, make that a bit smaller, bring in another clip art. Let's bring in the deer. You'll now see if you go on layers, I have the deer, I have the Santa. If we go to the carving layer and go to picture, I have two of the, both of those items on the picture perspective, on the picture layer. They're both currently set at 100 power and 10 depth. What I can do is tap on the center, change my settings. So let's put this down to, let's say 26, tap on OK tap on the save top right, tap off, and what I'll do, highlight again, and show to you that those settings have changed. So my center will engrave at power 27 and depth 10. The deer will engrave at power 100 and depth 10. So this gives you a lot more flexibility as to um, the settings for individual items on your workspace. Some of you will go, well, how do I cut? Well, what I can do is bring in an ellipse, so let's say a circle, and then likewise, I highlight everything, go to my layers. You'll see you've got the ellipse there, carving layer, it's on the line. You can set settings here for cutting, or you can move it down to the cut layer as you can see to the left of the icon, there is a little, um, I think it's knife, so tap on that and it'll go down to cut. So now it's on the cut layer and I can set up my uh, appropriate cut settings here as well. So when I now go to um, engrave this, because of the, um, what do you call it, the ordering here on the carving layer, it will first do the pictures, image, line, and then cut. You can, in fact, change these around if you like by just dragging them. Uh, however, I do recommend that you do your engravings first before any cutting. So picture, image, and line before any cutting. So from that perspective, I hope I've covered everything. Um, one of the core things with this is please when you're doing a material test, so one of these, please stay with your laser at all times. Uh, be ready for mini flames. Be ready for a lot of smoke. If you did the alteration or are going to do the alteration, so I'll try to get back to it, so you do a grid like this, you'll still get a fair bit of smoke, but a lot less flames um, from that perspective. However, still, please remain with your laser at all times. A laser is not a toy. A laser is a tool which burns. A laser is a tool which can cause serious damage. Um, if unsure, please consult your local fire authorities and ensure you have the appropriate firefighting equipment, uh, be it fire extinguishers, and also um, fire towels. Please, please, please put your health and safety ahead of your laser. And again, stay with your laser and stay safe. Thank you. And any questions, please do ask in the Laser Pecker user groups. So for the Laser Pecker 4, that's Laser Pecker 4 user group. Laser Pecker 2, that's the Laser Pecker 2 user group. And for the LX1, exactly the same, LX1 user group. Uh, thank you and see you soon.